Junkie Nation, gorgeous George and goes delivering again with another MMA superstar. This time it's UFC Bantamweight Marion Renault, who's going to be fighting next Saturday, February 6th, here in Las Vegas. Her opponent that night will be Macy Chazon. <laughs> it's going to be a good one, folks. And there she is, Marion. How you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. What do you think of my little French accent there that I threw in? If you would have said "wee oui, wee," oui, I would have been like, "Whoa!" I've been blown and away. I got, the, I got the Marion right, right? You did, and I was I was so stoked that you did that. So internally, I was like doing a little pump fist like this. I'm so happy you got that right. Yeah, everybody be saying Marion all the time. I'm like, no, it's Marion. So it is Marion. It's how yeah. much they it in Belize. The the Belizean Bruiser. Yes. Yeah. Yes, got it. Hey, um, this is your sixth year in the UFC, you know, and I just wanted to ask you, how has that been having two careers, you as a teacher full time and also as a fighter who's been doing this for six years? Six years is a is a good run. It's a it's a career. It's been pretty busy. Uh, I would say that I don't know how I've gotten some of the things done that I needed to get done, but I think it helps me not to overtrain. So it has been a very busy career to say the least. And with the opening of my new gym trifecta two years ago, I just increased my my schedule just by twofold. So I'm learning. I, I've always been a busy person. I prefer to be a busy person. So it's nothing new. You just don't know how to stop, huh? You just keep adding to it. There's not enough hours in the day, Marion. You got to chill. American grind, baby. You got Amazon and chill. No, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I wanted to ask you, we've had you on the show. It's been a while, but we have. And if I'm not mistaken, was it like a third grade or fifth grade class? What, 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 what class was it? What years did you teach? I teach freshmen through senior. Oh. oh, okay. Well, then I got that wrong. So I wanted to ask you, now that it's been six years, some of the ones that may have just caught you in your fresh, in you know, when they were freshmen and now maybe they're in college, did any of them circle back and either become hardcore MMA fans or just have an appreciation for it. like that was my freshman teacher that that type all, of that type of deal all the time all the time i get i get messages oh my gosh this was my teacher or their parents are like this is my son's teacher my daughter's teacher in fact i actually have a couple of students who train at my gym right now and who've been with me consistently for the last two years so they've definitely become mma fans and if they haven't they don't know what mma is they are now yeah i wish the teachers that are involved in MMA got as like, like Rich Franklin used to be a history teacher, if I'm not mistaken, but I wish they had a little bit more of that pub, like how we got to know Eddie Wineland is a fireman, Stephen Miocic is a fireman, Eric Del Fiero is a fireman. For some reason, I wanted to see if there was another career that also could match the fireman. And I know there's got to be a lot of other teachers. Do you know a lot of the other teachers that maybe haven't divulged it to us? No, there was, um, she she wasn't in the U.S. Wait, maybe she was. She was Misha Misha Tate's good friend. Um, she was I forget her name. She was a teacher. She's the only person that I knew who was a teacher. She's no longer in the UFC. That was years and years ago. I do know a few police officers, but I don't know very many teachers in the UFC. And I probably don't put it out there as much. I am a teacher. I'm a teacher. You know, as much as I should to get a little bit more, but. I mean, it is what it is, um, but I don't know a lot of teachers in the business. I think you should, because I think it's damn cool, man. Educators are so, um, I don't want to say underrated, because everybody loves their teachers, and they have fond memories of their teachers, their they're mentors, they're people that you keep with yourself for a long time. There's many of them that are special to, to you along you know, your, your growth. But what I meant was, um, I think they're like undervalued in terms of, uh, in sports, just like how difficult it can be to, to, to juggle, you know, both of them, just like how firemen do it. Maybe firemen get that extra um, love because they have a different type of schedule, which opens a few days up. Whereas you guys are going hard five days a week. I, I guess you do have the summer, but there is summer school. I don't know. No, it, and it's a little bit more, especially now I think we're underrated. We're like, Oh, they just get to stay at home and do this. No, we've had to develop a whole new curriculum. There are some teachers who had no technology use at all. They had to learn a new technology use, come up with new platforms to teach kids, to engage kids, to get kids to come to class, to get kids to turn on their, their um, videos. So I, I think that we are definitely underrated, especially for what we put up with and for what we go through on a daily basis. 
but for the past 17 years as a teacher, I've enjoyed it. And, you know, I'm at a point where I don't need to still be teaching, but I won't be giving up this job anytime soon. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of people in your hometown that are happy to hear that. Um, let's talk a little bit about MMA. You got your opponent, Macy Chassant, who was an ultimate fighter at 145. She's gone down to 135. She's doing, you know, she's got a nice start to her career. Um, what do you feel like she brings to the table that you may not have seen um, at this point? I mean, you know, you're a dozen fights into your UFC career, and you definitely have more than that. I think you have almost 20 or, or uh, in your career as a whole. But is there anything, Macy Chasson, as you were breaking down film, when you went, oh, okay, I got to look out for that right there? Um, there was there was a couple of things that stood out. Obviously, I'm not going to be like, hey, this is what she's doing. But um, there was a couple of things that stood out for us. But going into the fight, you can't look at a person's last fight and say, hey, this is their mistake. This is their mistake. Because granted, I go into my film, whether it's a win or a loss, and I'm like, OK, look at that. I'm my worst critic and I'm just on myself and I'll look at myself and I'll be like, OK, I need to fix that. And I will be so passionate about it. It's to the point where it's okay, calm down. Well, I have to watch video. I have to do tutorials. I have to drill it over and over again. So I do not make that mistake twice. So, I mean, you might see it, but if they're anything like me, which I'm assuming everybody is, then they're going to fix it. Um, so I don't go off of last video. It's just, okay, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. Can she stop me? You know, I was thinking about this earlier when I was, I was thinking about your teaching and all that right now, because we have less contact with people, the motivation from person to person kind of lacks a little bit because we just don't see as many people on a daily basis. Now there's motivation, you know, via television and film and all that. But uh, for you personally, has your motivation changed at all? Where, where do you get that fuel from now? You mean the fuel to keep moving, the fuel to keep training, the what fuel? All of it all of it. Um, well, I get to see people on a daily basis um, from my gym, believe it or not. And I have not stopped training since the pandemic started last year in March. And since they closed down, I had to train. I have a job. People pay me to, I get paid to go train. And so that's what I wanted to do. And so I haven't really stopped. The hunger for me is, you know, just to get in there and feel the competition. I am hungry for competition. Like I feel that even when I'm done with this, there'll be something else that I find that I have to compete in. I ha I am hungry for competition. I love it. I love it. From the moment you got into mixed martial arts to today, what do you feel like your generation of fighter? What, what's the biggest accomplishment in female mixed martial arts that your generation has brought to the table? I think just bringing mixed martial arts for women to the table in general. I think that this generation, my generation of females have brought it because think about it. We're still in our infancy stages for women's mixed martial arts. Now you see the growth growing. Men has already been established. Men have already been established for many, many years. Women, we're starting to grow. We're starting to catch on. And little girls, little girls are looking up at us and saying, that's, what I want to do. And now they're training. Like I have nieces who have been training since they were six years old. And one of them in particular, her mindset is I'm going to be a champion. She wants to learn how to box. She's a wrestler. She's a really good wrestler. She does jujitsu. She's a gray belt. She is, has a one track mind. If she's not training that day, she's running. So it's the next generation. I think that we set in stone the foundation. So here's the foundation. Now these next generation of girls are just going to build off of that and just going to explode this sport. George asked a question earlier in the interview that I kind of wanted to put a little twist on. And uh, we've heard before your students and how they react to your career outside of teaching. But what about the administration, other teachers? Have they ever shown up for a class or have they ever shown? Any interest in all that? So have they shown interest in training? No. <laughs> no, not really. And in fact, when I first started fighting, I didn't get good reception from a couple of people um, who worked in the district. 
But my main concern was my superintendent. And she was a crazy MMA fan. And that's all I needed. And she loved the fact that I trained in MMA and that I fought. In fact, she went to a few of my local fights. And to this day, even though she's not my um, superintendent anymore, she still watches my fights. She still follows me. She's She is, and she's older. She's probably in her 60s, 70s, and she is the loudest person in the audience screaming and yelling if um, she was there face to face. But um, right now, as far as my administrators and teachers, they are crazy supportive. In fact, you know, they send me messages. Good luck, Mr. No. Good luck. Good luck in your upcoming fight. Hey, Mr. No, can we get a t-shirt? Like they're just, they're very supportive. Yeah. But is she louder than Tyron Woodley's mom? <laughs> I don't know. I think there's a little bit of competition there. <laughs> what about Eddie Alvarez's wife? No, no. <laughs> no yeah, those two, those two. Oh, man, they are the loudest fans I've ever seen. Oh, right I don't there. know. If my son was fighting, nobody would compete. I could be at the top of the stadium on the roof and you would and and every my this would be my son. Mom, shut up. <laughs> Cuz I am loud. <laughs> Is, again, he, is he training? Is he is your son training? Heck no, my son does not like one-on-one -on -one training. Did he train? Yes, he did it for about seven years. He's more into team sports than anything. Uh, he doesn't like that one-on-one -on -one type of combat. Marion, in any way, did your presence on the campus of being an MMA fighter do you think either indirectly or directly ever even curb bullying? No. Not no. at all. Mm -mm. I'm just wondering, like, even like if I'm just thinking of, I mean, I haven't been to high school in years. I'm an old ass cat. But I'm just thinking, like, just knowing that I'm not the baddest dude on this campus or the girls, you know, thinking the same thing because there's someone there that does it at a high level. Maybe that just toned somebody down or maybe maybe your influence just got someone to, to stop being a jerk. Like. I don't know. I guess I was wondering if you ever had a, if you ever felt like you had a one on one connection with someone that just you could tell their attitude changed just because of their respect for what you do. Oh, yeah. All the time. All the time. And and one on one conversations. And that's why I like being in person is because I build a strong rapport with pretty much all my students, um, even if they're not my students. You know, just talking to them. If I walk by and they're alone, I'll just be like, hey, what's up, man? What's your name? <laughs> you know, but I build a strong rapport with my students. And yes, I have had the ability because I do relate to them on a lot of scales, a lot of different scales. Um, as far as, you know, being a teenager and knowing what it was like being a teenager or being an angry teenager, I was that person. I was that teenager who was angry. I don't even know why I was angry. I was a student athlete. Um, so, yeah, I've been able to relate to a lot of them. I've been able to curb a lot of them, their ways of thinking, um, to help them with their grades, um, to help them with training, whatever the case is. But I have never encountered someone who is disrespectful. The one thing that I harp on in my class is respect. If you want me to give it to you, then you got to give it back to me. And that's something that I hold highest than anything else in my class is respect. If I if I'm like, hey, good morning, and you're like, f that, I don't I don't even tolerate it, and I don't I have never encountered it. I think I've been blessed to set the tone that when I walk into class, this is my expectation, and everybody meets it. I dig it. I dig it. I could talk to you all day about uh, your career as a teacher. Maybe one day when the pandemic's over. You can come to our studio at Mandalay Bay and we can do, you can co-host with us because I have a lot more, but but we'll make it quick because you have a fight coming up and I'm sure you got your final workouts coming up. Just two more. One, I noticed in your career, mm -hmm. you've finished almost every one of your fights, but no one's ever finished you. Has that ever allowed you in your mind to just know, I can be a little bit more reckless because I can pretty much get out of some hairy, sticky spots in the submission game and no one seems to be in a clean shot at my chin. That's what they think. There's been a couple instances and and it hasn't been caught because I've watched the video again and nobody noticed it. But there is a couple of instances where I was hit with a hot one and nobody could tell that I was hit with a hot one. I I've felt a hot one. I really have. And I don't like that feeling. So I do my best to be defensive, but um, trying to be more aggressive offensively um, to get the job done 
because if you notice, anytime it's went to a decision, it hasn't went in my favor, my favor. And so it is my responsibility to make sure I get not only the decision, but also the finish if I can. Yeah, and maybe I shouldn't have said reckless. Maybe what I should have said was just more aggressive. Um, but I, th I think you knew what I meant um, because I think that's pretty pretty cool that you've never been finished. Can you tell us who the hot one was or do you still want to keep that one on the d -low so no one picks up what that strike was? <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. It was my first fight with Alexis. Uh, I think uh, she caught me. I don't even know. It was just a dumb punch and it caught me just right on my temple. And I immediately just saw blotches and I clinched her real quick. Um, but nobody caught that. I felt like my legs were going to give out. But by clinching her, she held me up and I was able to recompose myself. Nice. Speaking and of the one, another one was with Yana. Um, um, Yana me with the hot one. And I was like, what? Your hand? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I'm um, like, okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, I feel you. <laughs> um, <laughs> the legs. I, I wanted to ask you about Poye McGregor. When you see a fight that ends in that style, and it's not like you didn't know what a calf kick is, but I, I was wondering, in high-profile fights, in your gym at least, or gyms, when you guys come back on a Monday, are, are people talking about those techniques that finished high-level fights? And does, somebody, does anybody say, hey, let's – Let's look at these a little bit more. Or how does that work when it comes to other other fights that happen that don't pertain to you? But you know, it's close to when you're in camp and you're you're maybe finishing out your game plan. I guess. Mm, I think in in a whole, in a general, we we look at what works for other people, especially in my case where my opponent is much taller with the longer reach. So we look at fights in particular that have that same outcome. And what possibly did that person do to maybe get in? What did they do to break up their length? Um, so we look at stuff like that. We've seen the calf tips. I mean, from day one, we've seen them. Um, whether we've incorporated them or not, I, I don't know if it was available to us. I mean, it is, but whether we're gonna do it or not, I don't know. We don't just go like, hey, that's a good one, let's use it. Um, if it comes, it comes. Gotcha. Okay. Well, listen, thanks so much for the time today. It was great catching up with you. And hopefully we can do this again, like I say, when the pandemic's over in one of your visits to Las Vegas. In the meantime, I hope you have a safe flight to Vegas, yes. safe flight cut, and one heck of a fight with Macy Chasson. I think it's a great fight night card. There's a lot of talent. Frankie Edgar, he's fighting Corey Sanhagen. And yeah. it's not just the main event of the big guys with Volkov. And uh, Overeem, we got your fight. So these are all, all these are ranked fighters that I'm talking about. Benil Dariush and and Fajeda, that's going to be a good one. So I'm pumped and I'm ready. Yeah, I, I'm excited. I'm excited to get back in the cage. You don't even understand. I'm I'm pumped <laughs> more than right. anybody knows. I'm like, let's go. Can't wait to see it. All right, thanks again for the time. Enjoy your weekend. All right, thank you guys.